a word from your security technician. Passwords. I'm going to bring up a couple of really basic things. Now, this is a simplistic example where you make a password or passphrase longer by a digit or a character. Digit and character get misused a lot. Digit refers to numbers. Character refers to letters, numbers, upper and lowercase letters, symbols. How many symbols? Okay. If you do eight digit numbers, because that's easier to do the math for, you basically just look up what are the combinations. <clears throat> but of the 15 million common eight digit numbers that are used as passphrases that was found on systems that have been cracked and are available, we may not be able to get into those particular accounts, but we now have a dictionary or lookup table here is what it's really called, but if it was words, it'd be a dictionary. Um, but as of 2023, an artificial intelligence routine was able to smart guess by figuring out an algorithm that 51% of those eight-digit numbers were guessed in less than a minute. That's in 2023. Half. Got the rest of the next set, another X number of percent, to get 65% of them in about an hour. So a really strong portion of them, over half of them were done in less than a minute. A smaller section weren't clever picked numbers are all randomish. Most people use random number generators when they do eight-digit numbers. They just memorize it like an old phone number. Lots of us used to memorize those. So if you can memorize, if you're if you're of the species called human, that you can memorize like five phone numbers, you can you can memorize one phone number, right? Well, it's four digits and three. That's seven characters. So you have to throw a, uh, oh, yeah, uh, how about an area code? All of a sudden you have something really important we'll bring up in a minute. Uh, 65 were guessed in an hour, 71% it took a day, and then 80% it was less than a month. By 2024, almost the same, almost literally 12 years, 12 months later, 90% were done in seven hours. The other 10% went done in about a day or two maybe a month. Um, then someone discovered something simple. Obviously, if you get something guessing your passphrase on a login to social media, if you do it wrong two or three times, it locks you out for X number of minutes or hours. It doesn't take hours. But what if you had it coming from hundreds of locations and somehow someone got through because they were able to use you know, a proxy or a VPN to keep rotating the password guesses to appear to come from all over the planet. That would shorten the time. What they had is the timer was based on total time, not total time, multiplied by thousands of different guesses coming in at once that were spread out properly, interleaved from the lookup table to speed it up. But why did it take seven hours? Obviously, this is an order of magnitude at least. It should have taken no more than a day to do all of them. Well, it was seven hours to do 90%, which is a little bit wrong. The reason is, is that the system detected, oh, uh, there can't be that many legitimate password checks all over the planet. Look for a pattern. When you log in with your login, the name, however you type it in, whatever it is that's standardized on the website, like an email address or a name, and then a passcode or phrase, however long it is, it can be any length. The computer system at that end doesn't know the passphrase and also doesn't know your login unless it's, uh, except that it's supposed to explicitly know the login, otherwise it can't work. But to give you access, it takes those numbers and creates a hash from them and compares it to the hash it has on record for that login. It can't figure out the password in reverse order. Any website that says the password you typed in is too similar, don't trust them. I don't trust them. I know that there's a good reason to trust them, but I won't. Also, any of them that have stated factually that they keep copies of your passwords around, don't trust that website. I don't care if they put it behind a hash to have another code to go get it. It's still traceable back to it. It also creates a lookup table on their system that can be exploited by a bot that acts on their system. If their system keeps a list of all the passwords in plain text, or doesn't matter what kind of compression, um, it's going to get a lookup table that's very, very accurate and very fast.
Yes, lots of websites have had that problem. Specifically, your local bank. As of today's date, every single banking system on the planet, no matter where you are, has been hacked this way. So they're all guilty. Decades after the first incident. So let's move on. How long would a passphrase take? Not just numbers, but let's talk about just numbers. How many numbers do you have to use for it to take several years to get in? 19. More than a year, up to five years, and in some cases, some of these last, I mean, it goes from like a day to a decade. But if you're going to do an all-number set, you have to use 19 numbers. That gives you an idea, I mean, literally, that's the number of digits. Uh, that gives you an idea of how many guesses can be done per year through cracking a file. None of this is actually based on your checking your passwords, but let's let's ignore that for a minute. But your biggest problem is your social media pages might have the same passwords as your email, which is where you might keep your real passwords for real stuff. That's a problem. It's not that everything has a password, it's that you might reuse a password or have passwords, passwords, pass, passwords, passwords that are similar. So let's move on. Oh, and by the way, banks only allowing short four-digit numbers for a, a PIN, really. But I'll tell you again how they get away with that and how it works for us. Let's move on. What if we use lowercase letters? That's 26 letters of the alphabet. You need 14 of them for it to take more than a year, and it would take decades at that point, like 40 years or 20 years or 10 years. It'd take over 10 years. If you do 11 upper and lower case letters, because now you have 26 plus 26 for you know your numbers, um, you only need 11 of them for it to take more than a year. You also can just use numbers, upper and lower case letters, and 11 of them, and it take decades. I mean, it's literally just add in upper and lower case letters and then throw in the number set. It takes many many years. Some of these are ridiculously long. If you do 10 symbols, numbers, upper and lowercase letters, it takes years. 10. Just 10 digits. If you do area code, prefix, and the four digits, how many characters you got? Okay, yeah. Now we're, I mean, you go from, you know, 10 characters and it takes, you know, you know, the time it takes to take a sip these days to crack your code, to taking, if you use upper and lowercase letters, numbers, and symbols, you only need 10, ten characters, and you're, and you're literally taking more than a year. At 11 symbols, no matter how you cut it, it takes centuries. If you do symbols, numbers, upper lowercase letters, it takes centuries, 400 years. As of 2021, this is how the math was done. So why are you able to get away with um, your password being your name and then your birth year and birth month and birth day? It just, you know, why is that working or some combination of it? Seriously, I know a way of doing that that people did as a standard. And as long as you never gave out your real birthday, I am January 1st of 1968. You only have four digits of that. And no, I never use my actual birth date or anything variation of it for a password because that's that's data that can be looked up. Same thing with my name. I don't use my name in any way for the login or password. I really don't. I can't because I know better. So what do we do from a takeaway? Let's talk about another one. But again, the longer the string, the better in general. The more unique it is, the better. Guessability, however, is completely destroyed here. Someone simply gets a copy of it from a weak password because your bank only used four fucking digits and they got the full password because they did a password recovery thing and it gave up the ghost. Or somebody at the bank had access to a plain text copy of your passwords because for some reason they thought that was a good idea. So we'll do the next step. Why is it you can get away with your literally 10 digit number password or your your really short version like I love my cat some of you used a password like that why is that working it's because online systems don't let you guess the password infinitely fast you have to guess it in human speed i don't want them to check for human behavior or check that you're a human i want them to have human characteristics i have in every place i've lived 
I never type my password in from a different city. I never do it. And if I do, I expect it to do a challenge to make sure I'm a human first, which slows me down, and to demand that I go through and either do a, a follow-up question, which only I know that exists, which I never saw. The one place that actually, on the internet, let me use a password question and answer, Yahoo, never brought it up when it was appropriate. It was unexploited when it should have been. Because if I went from one county to another, it should have asked me for the the question and answer, and then it should have made me change it on the spot. So I had to make a note somewhere, and then make an or tell me a number that I had to write down immediately when I saw it on the screen, and I would be given a limited period of time to write it down because I had the right password. Once I get the right password, or the bad guy guesses the right password, there should be one more layer. But here's how the layers work on your computer. Virtually all of your computers, unless you go through a VPN, have an IP address that keeps pretty consistent. Now, that can be faked by somebody literally plugging into your computer network or hijacking your wireless connection, you know, hacking your Gibson, borrowing your ladder, and writing your Wi-Fi signal. But it's actually pretty uncommon. It's pretty hard to do that. Uh, the next thing is... Um, the MAC address for the hardware, which again is, is very visible on the internet, but that's simply something that's consistent. If somebody fakes your computer fully, that would give them slightly higher priority. Okay. But if there's two of you coming in from two locations, and I'm at one of the locations that I regularly go to, I always hit two coffee shops a day when I lived in Portland for doing my Wi Fi. This one and this one on a certain time of day. So unless they're in the same building with me and doing this, it should figure out, hmm, this is the early morning coffee shop. This is probably the right guy. And he typed the password in immediately. Um, let's make him answer the, the, the challenge question and answer that only he knows about. You know, what was, your, what was your name of your first teacher? And I would put in agony. Actually, that's not the correct answer. But I tell people that, and eventually I got a... Did you blah, blah, blah? So someone got my password but did it from an unusual location. Big mistake. Or a funny MAC address because it was the wrong network card. Big mistake. Or it was a funny... At the time, Yahoo would analyze whether or not you were using a certain kind of Pentium. It would actually ID your hardware. But most of us now isolate ourselves from that. And, it, and at the time, it would check your MAC address. But again, we're using VPNs that also hide our IP address. Yeah, it's where you come from, what hardware you're doing, your password and login match, and it's at the right time of day at the right coffee shop. That was how I did it. There was a profile you could do on Yahoo for a while that was offered to people who were willing to pay them. I paid them five bucks, ID my pattern of behavior for one month, and assume that if it deviates, immediately ask me the challenge question. And it was, you know, what's your pet's name or whatever was the suggestion. I put in something different. You know, and, and an answer that you wouldn't get. You know, what was your first lover? Agony. Again, I'll always say agony. That's not what I typed out. That's too easy. But the point is, it wasn't the fucking password that kept people out. Yahoo would hack, get hacked all the time. It was the fact that their employees could not access a goddamn database at one point because they wouldn't let them. They just never let the, bas the password uh, database ever build. They were told over and over again, you can make money by, by making this list of passwords and we can sell it to people. Yeah, that would be the reason we're not going to fucking do it, you bastards. And then they whistle blew about this happening from antivirus companies and companies that eventually made your VPN. All of them. So, passphrases, again. We have 10 numbers, 26 uppercase and 26 lowercase letters, and a bunch of symbols. Let's say we use the common prefixes, there's 128, let's say, 128 root words, and 64 suffixes. And we end up with hundreds of thousands of passphrases based on just a word that could be a normal root word or the prefix and suffix, like undebatable, would be an entire password. That gives us hundreds of thousands of words, but they're dictionary words and they take very little time to look up. All of these combinations are based on the idea that you're cracking a file on a computer. This is not what you're all dealing with. The way you stop this stuff is to fight the social engineering by having these delays and having proper double checks and have it get used to your pattern of behavior and not have the company stupidly share it 
with salespeople. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Good luck with that. Market Research.